Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are talking about Thea. What is Thea? Well, other than being a planet, Thea is a uh, new IDE basically. This is really, really being aimed at as an alternative to Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to do a full fourth confession right here. Visual Studio Code is my tool of choice. It has replaced Visual Studio for most work that I would do, but it's also replaced a number of other tools that I used to really rely on. WebStorm, uh, Sublime Text, Notepad++. I just find myself, whenever I need to edit some text, be it for just straight up text or code, Visual Studio Code is what I use most of the time. And here we are looking at Thea. Now you might be thinking, wow, that looks a lot like Visual Studio Code. And you're right, they are very, very similar in many ways. A lot of the same functionality, uh, but where it gets really, really similar is right here. So this is where I can install extensions. Specifically, I can drag and drop in Visual Studio Code extensions, or I can get them from their extension exchange. So this is actually compatible with Visual Studio Code's extensions. And that's actually a big deal because Visual Studio Code made it what it is because it is a highly modular design. So all of the various different language support, things like GDScript or Rust or C++ or C Sharp are added via extensions, as are things like integrated web browsers and all kinds of other things. So why is Eclipse making a version of Visual Studio for themselves? Well, the first one is going to be illustrated right now as I press the F11 key. And you will notice I am in a browser. I'm actually running this in Firefox. So this web browser that you see before you with, you know, code highlighting and extensions and everything else and auto completion, as you can see right there, uh, and uh, all debugging options and integrated terminal, all of that stuff. This is running in a browser. Now, technically, this isn't Thea that you are seeing right here. This is actually Gitpod IO, which is an implementation of Thea. Now, the Eclipse Foundation is kind of taking Thea in the same direction they went with Eclipse. This is an IDE kit in a way. So there isn't really a Thea download. This is something you implement Thea to make your own tools. And as we're gonna see in a few seconds, a number of companies out there are actually implementing IDEs based off of Thea's code base. So this is Thea, not really a whole lot more to show with the IDE because uh, if you've used Visual Studio Code, it is very similar. This is your debugging stuff. This is your source code integration. You can have uh, integration in with um, Git repositories, etc. Again, you have the extensions and the ability to bring in uh, existing VSIX or Visual Studio Code extensions in here. You have your tab multi-support here. Uh, again, you can see uh, MD support in there. Performance is solid. It's actually kind of hard to tell sometimes that you are running this in a browser. Um, so that is Thea over here. We've got a couple of options. Here's where I'm logged in. You logged into uh, Gitpod using your GitHub uh, credentials. We have outline over here. We have pull requests or GitHub integration over there. And yeah, that, that's kind of it. You can even undock. You can reorganize the windows like so. We can create multiple tabs. Uh, you can split across. You can have um, breakpoint set. It is, for all intents and purposes, exactly what you expect. You can do almost all of the stuff you can do in Visual Studio Code, but you can do it in a browser or in a desktop client. So this is, in a sense, an IDE creation kit. So now we're going to head on over to the Eclipse Foundation's official um, press release, I suppose this was. This actually came out, the initial one was um, April Fool's Day. This one actually was March 31st, I think. But then I heard about this on April Fool's Day and I'm like, I don't, I don't cover news on April Fool's Day. I'll just cover this after. So that's why we're getting it a couple days later. And I also learned that the Eclipse Foundation is based out of Canada's capital of Ottawa. Although technically I think it's Canada, uh, which yes, there is a place called Canada in Canada. Little lesson, it's a suburb of Ottawa. Anyways, Clips Foundation, one of the world's largest open source foundations today announced the release of Thea 1.0, a true open source alternative. Again, like I said, they are directly going after Visual Studio Code here. Alternative to Microsoft's popular Visual Studio Code software, Eclipse Thea is an extensible platform to develop multi-language cloud and desktop integrated development environments with state-of-the-art web technology that enables developers, organizations, and vendors to create new extensible developer experiences. Early contributors and adopters span a broad variety of industries and applications and include companies like Arm, Arduino, Eclipse Source, Ericsson, Gitpod, Google Cloud, IBM, Red Hat, SAP, and Typefox. 
and then some blah 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 about it. This was started by Ericsson and Typefox in 2016. Thea Project has become an integral part of Enterprise Crowd Solutions around the world. Its momentum and distribution become significant enough that the last year the project approached the Eclipse Foundation as a potential host and vendor neutral foundation that could further guide the project's growth. So basically this was started by Ericsson as in you know the the Scandinavian side of Sony Ericsson, uh, who are still around, amazingly enough, and uh, Typefox. Um, today, Thea is one of the Eclipse projects um, encompassed by the Eclipse Cloud Development Tool Working Group, an industry collaborative focused on delivering development tools for and in the cloud. By the way, Eclipse as the Eclipse IDE, it still exists as well. So here's where you kind of go, well, what the hell? If there's a Visual Studio Code, why make Eclipse Thea? And here are the most significant de uh, differences. So we've got Thea's architecture is more modular and allows for significantly more customization. Thea is designed from the ground up to run in the desktop and the cloud. If you're wondering, hey, can't you run Visual Studio Code in the cloud? Yeah, you can. We'll get back to that. But that was a port. Of it. This was actually designed from day one to be cloud and desktop based. And Thea is developed under the community driven and vendor neutral governance of the Eclipse Foundation. I think you can read that last one as Eclipse isn't, sorry, the Eclipse Thea is not Microsoft. And I think in this day and age, less and less people are caring about the whole Microsoft thing, but some people are really still get burned by that. Uh, Thea is designed to work as a native desktop application as well as in the context of a browser and a remote server to support both situations with a single source. Thea runs in two separate processes. Those processes are called front end and back end respectively, and they communicate through the JSON RPC messages over web um, sockets or REST APIs over HTTP. In the case of Electron, the back end as well as the front end run locally, while in a remote context, the back end would run on a remote host. So basically, you've got the front facing stuff, the, the um, you know, the stuff that you would see in your browser or an Electron, which is essentially a way of running browser code on the desktop, which by the way, uh, Visual Studio Code also uses Electron. So many things use Electron these days, to be honest. So you can have it basically the server and the client be on all on your machine locally installed. In which case, it's just like Visual Studio Code. You can't tell the difference from a native application or you can have it so that the client runs say in your browser or in a application on your machine, but the server and the server part that has access to things like the local repository and the file systems and all that stuff, they can also be run on a server instead, like what we saw with Gitpod. Um, so that, that's kind of the idea. We got a little bit more details coming on from over on the blog. Again, April Fool's Day, so I kind of skimmed over it at the time because I hate that day with all of my soul. A lot of this is going to come down to mostly the same contents, but there is an interesting thing here about part of where Visual Studio Code isn't quite so open source. Um, so we've got it right uh, well, here we've got the first comment. Visual Studio Code is great, but it's only ever going to be a Microsoft product. I find that a little weird. Anyone can fork it and do what they want with it. But where the challenge is, is this open VSX registry. This is an open source alternative to Microsoft's Visual Studio Marketplace, which isn't fully open source. When you go to get extensions or whatever, those are actually being hosted in Microsoft's cloud, in Microsoft's format. Whereas in this case, they're trying to create their own open registry. You can still install the um, same plugins that you would use for Visual Studio um, you can basically download them yourself and drag them in, but they're creating their own registry. So what they're trying to get is for developers that develop extensions for um, Eclipse, sorry, for uh, Visual Studio Code to also publish their extensions on their registry. And you'll be able to get both of them as well. So if you've always wanted to check out Visual Studio Code, but that whole Microsoft thing was turning you off, Thea Eclipse may be a great thing for you. Also, if you were thinking more web first, then this might be a great thing for you. And if you were looking to create an IDE but didn't find Visual Studio Code's uh, base uh, kind of modular enough, that is where Thea again comes in. So that is the idea. It just launched at version 1.0. Like I said, there isn't really a download you can grab right now. So if you go to thea.ide.org, um, you can find details of it right here and you can try it on Gitpod, which is where we started and you can run it like in your browser like so, but there is no, you're, you're not going to find anywhere on here where it um, enables you to, you know, um, download it directly. In terms of languages, it's got language server protocol, which by the way, Microsoft created uh, and it supports languages such as JavaScript, Java, Python, and then all the other ones you can get. So again, like GD script and Rust and D and R and God, we have a, 
we have a programming language for every letter, don't we? Anyways, those are all supported. There's an integrated terminal. There's a flexible layout. I kind of showed you some of that in action as I was moving things around in general. But again, there is no download here. The idea is that people are going to implement their own languages for it. And some people already have. Red Hat have a command console they created with it. Um, Ericsson have something of their own. Um, SAP's command console uses it. So it's as a basis for other people to make tools. If you actually want to check it out though, the closest you can get right now is Gitpod. Now, no doubt someone is going to create a Visual Studio alternative. It sounds like right out of the box, Fia could actually be that, but for some reason they're not providing binaries, which seems really dumb to me because if people want to check this out as a local download, why don't they provide that? But they don't, anyways, just so you know. Um, now, again, the source code is available up on GitHub. It is an open source project. If you're wondering what license this is under, this is actually under an Eclipse license. Uh, I, I don't know the details of the Eclipse public license. I do believe it is considered um, a part of the Canon group of open source licenses, so it should be legit. Um, so it's under Eclipse, P-E-P-L, or GPLv2. And GPLv2, never been a huge fan of, but I'm not sure what the Eclipse license is all about. If you want to make a product built on this, you're gonna wanna get yourself or your lawyer in here to you know, get into the terms and conditions. I do wish they used something like MIT license or Zlib or BSD, um, but they didn't. And that's enough of a reason to be honest that I probably, I won't, I would not build a product on GPL unless it was all forced to, I guess you could say, but that's, yeah, anyways. So that is it. Now I mentioned earlier on, what about Visual Studio Code? Can't you run it in the browser? Well, actually, yes, you can. Visual Studio Online is very much a thing, uh, but I don't know how publicly available it is yet. There are actually a couple of other people that have also made online versions of Visual Studio Code and host it for you. By the way, the idea of a cloud-based IDE is nothing new. There is Cloud9, um, and a few other ones have been at it for a while. Cloud9 was definitely one of the first, um, but you know we're kind of getting in a generational leap here. Um, so uh, personally, I, I am I, I like Visual Studio Code. It works well for me. The community is great for me. I don't have a beef with Microsoft. I think they're really kind of moving in a nice pro open source friendly way. I, I don't have a reason to switch over. I don't need more modularity, and I'm not developing tools. So I, I won't be using Thea anytime soon. And frankly, I couldn't. Day and Eclipse, as in the Eclipse IDE. Uh, so I, I don't really, I don't need this personally, but I'm wondering what you guys think. Were you looking for an alternative Visual Studio Code? Does that whole Microsoft thing make you a little bit wary and you want something you know, more open source with an open um, extensions repository or you don't care either? Let me know those things, comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.